Yes. So, uh, firstly, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being on time, everyone uh, that has started to tune in. I know it's three fifty-six, so this is just a quick housekeeping check. Uh, we'll be going back on mute uh, till about four p.m. and at sharp four, we will be kicking it off. Panels are set. You're all set, and we're very, very happy to see you all here. Uh, back in two minutes, and until then, uh, you know, get your water bottles next to you because we don't want you to leave the. Uh, the the eventual conversation for the next one hour. Uh, again, very very grateful for the panelists and the attendees who are choosing to spend their early Thursday evening with us. Thank you. Yes, we're just waiting for everyone to now, uh, you know, continue to sort of join the join the webinar. We still have about 30, 40 seconds to go. Uh, also for the attendees and for the panelists, we're also streaming this from the Nokri Hiring Suite Facebook page. Uh, that's also live, uh, you know, and going on parallelly. Um, just as we hit four, I just thought I'd let, you know, wish everyone a good evening because I think, uh, and Hope everyone's doing well, safe, surrounded by loved ones, because I think that is key in these times. Uh, that's something that, you know, we've seen uh, be the core focus throughout everything. Uh, now that we are sharp at four, I think we're good to go. And uh, firstly, I wanted to just thank everyone for being here. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to another edition of the Step Up webinar series by the Nokri Hiring Suite family, you know, which includes brands like Nokri.com, ResDesk, Employer Branding, I Am Jobs, Hirist. My name is Prashant Sharma. I am a member of the InfoEdge marketing function and we're super happy to have you join us uh, this Thursday, eve or, you know, Thursday evening or afternoon, I think right on time. Uh, we sincerely hope, you know, uh, that you're staying safe and taking all the uh, precautions in these pandemic times. Uh, our objective through this series is to ensure that we all can learn from the experiences and insights of industry leaders and together try to navigate through these uncertainty uh, fill times, you know, with regards to recruitment and overall business. Uh, it's a wonderful pleasure to have four esteemed panelists today. Uh, but before I bring them into the, uh, bring them in and discuss the topic, here are a few, you know, key things to keep in mind about the eventual webinar. Uh, we're starting at 4 p.m. sharp, and we will be ending it by 5 p.m. So it's a one-hour webinar. Uh, you were lucky to receive so many questions, you know, in, in advance with the registrations that. I think we've received close to 300 to 400 questions. And uh, of course, it's not possible for us to take all of them, uh, but we've organized them into a flow and a structure so that uh, we're able to at least talk about all the points, even if we're not able to take each and every question. Uh, we'll be doing a few live polls as well, you know, to, uh, to ensure that we, we are able to interact with all the attendees as well. Um, and, and of course, you know, time permitting, uh, we will also try to take a few live questions as well. Uh, Eventually, if I'm not able to take each question or bring everyone into the conversation, my apologies in advance. That's a part of, uh, that's the tough part of my job as well as the only non-specialist here. Uh, uh, we've got a great panel today and the topic for today is in fact, uh, it, it's a, it's, I, I believe and it's something that has come across from the feedback that we've received uh, from previous webinars as well, uh, that it will be a huge and important component of the new normal. Uh, which is remote hiring. Uh, this is a topic that we've seen possibly the most interest in. And uh, while the world continues to heal, recover, and I think hiring will also have to adapt and make new processes. Uh, this is something that, you know, we're really excited about discussing through this webinar. Uh, hope you have a few notepads set and, and your pen and paper ready, because I'm sure uh, you will want to take a few notes from some wonderful insights that will come in. Uh, to talk about this today, we have... Uh, you know, four panelists. We had two first time, three next time, and today we have four. Uh, if, if if I talk about the overall uh, aspect of experience, 
now if i combine the experience it's close to 6 decades so 60 years i have next to me on this panel uh, of working experience of across industries and i'm really really grateful to have that uh for starting with vinay trivedi he is the chro at tone tag uh, vinay is you know has worked across industries and is someone who's been very very kind to us in our previous endeavors as well so we're very grateful to have you here vinay jitender paniar is someone who's uh, who's the chro at moengage another very very fast and rising company and, and and you know they've already done some great things vinay himself you know doesn't necessarily only talk about his hr you know management strategy he also considers himself as a polymath he's a management consultant thought leader he loves cricket as well and is a passionate uh, speaker as well uh, mega uh, you know coming to mega mega is the human resource director at fiserv again close to 15 years of experience across you know fortune 500 companies uh, i think whether it's diversity and inclusion leadership development hiring or in fact performance management i think she's someone who's who's had who's, who's had great experience working in those fields as well uh, and of course our fourth panelist mr khalid raza he's the talent acquisition leader uh, for north and east india as well as bangladesh at ey uh, i think a lot of folks within the hr fraternity already know him because through his time at ibm satyam he's someone who's worked across verticals and is someone you know who's who, who's also worked across geographies uh and we're very very grateful you know uh, to all, to have all of you here uh to start things off we usually have a small introduction uh but today i thought i'd just try to spice things up a bit and rather than any long introductions i'm going to go one by one to each of you and what i'm going to try to ask you is give me three three insights uh, now the first question is about a very very important aspect which is you know we 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 want to encourage positivity in these times and i want you to tell me and the attendees uh, one positive individual experience in, from from your personal life one positive professional experience you know from your from whatever you've been seeing through your teams and at organizations and anything else that you believe is a pleasant surprise in this covid crisis i'm going to come to you mega first and i'd like you to just uh, you know unmute and go ahead with that uh, mega please tell us who what and why would it be uh, one positive professional positive personal and one pleasant surprise yeah thank you prashant and thank you so much for having me here so uh, let me start one with professional first uh, because you know we are on this pandemic thing so you know our global ceo always says that you know if you don't take the most out of the crisis then you know you haven't take the benefit out of the crisis i see today that professionally what we never thought is achievable today is something that we all are now moving towards whether it's work from home to work from anywhere to even people showing a lot more empathy to people being a lot more empathetic towards not just in india or cultural sensitivities but just beyond boundaries that we have gone today you know when you get on a call globally the first thing people ask is hey how are you and your family i think i haven't seen that kind of a connection that people have built with covid 19 and you know earlier people used to say how hey how's the weather but today everybody starts a conversation by saying that you know hey how are you and how's your family so i think i've seen that cultural change you know with covid 19 and i think think it's a huge professional achievement because you know we've started to talk about your families we've been more empathetic if your child is you know moving in and around or making a noise over a call it's okay now earlier it wasn't okay professionally so i see a lot has changed culturally and we've started to move boundaries and i think which is a big thumbs up today from a professional standpoint with covid 19 uh something personally feel you know uh what days have not gone much longer than what it used to be which means i never thought that you know uh, i can manage house chores which i used to never do or uh, along with 12 to 14 hours every day because the days have absolutely gone along with virtual uh, you know way that we work today and along with you know if you have kids at home then of course it's an added day long for you so i feel personally while you're able to be with your kid and see everything what's around in your home but i never thought that in a day i can achieve so much which just gives me personally a lot of space to say okay i can do this as well which means you know why don't we you know i start thinking differently i think that's a personal orientation that i've gone into which is saying you know i could never think i can do so much which i'm able to do today so which is a great personal achievement for me i think uh, one surprise for me uh, 
you know, in last two months, uh, sitting in my workstation and seeing my balcony, I haven't seen so many butterflies in the environment. And why I'm saying that is, you know, I sometimes feel that, you know, with COVID-19, with traffic not being there, with us not splitting and garbaging in and around, sometimes I feel the nature is healing and maybe we are the virus. Uh, so it's a restart button for all of us to think differently, to say that, you know, uh, with this pandemic, do we want to learn around how to save an environment, how to think differently about where we work, how we work, what do we do with the nature? I think that's a pleasant surprise for me that, you know, that conversation would have have taken so much longer, but now it's not become a pressing need for each one of us. So I hope that answers. Great. I think I think that sets the context and introduces you to the attendees brilliantly as well. Uh, I think some great shares there. I'm going to come to you next, Vinay, and I'd like to hear you know, the, the, the same three shares from you. So um, thank you for uh, sort of having all of us here. I think from a professional perspective, uh, if I were to talk of uh, HR, uh, this has been one of the biggest opportunities that the HR fraternity has got, where you don't have to push your managers to uh, sort of uh, say, trust people, uh, trust uh, remote, trust somebody not being physically present. They've just adopted to it. If uh, there's anything that will come out of this, pandemic for HR is uh, change management is going to be a lot more easier. If somebody calls up and says he or she is working from home, um, people will not doubt saying, oh, I think he has something else to do or he has to, an interview to attend or he has something else to do. So that's a big, big positive, uh, which is very underrated, but a big positive for the HR fraternity. Um, I think for me personally, there have been a lot of things that have happened uh, because of the additional time that sort of I've got. Um, I've lost six kilos um, in weight by uh, picking up a lot of, uh, you know, physical exercises, including household chorus works. Um, we call it cardio, which is otherwise jhadu pocha, but we used to call it cardio. Uh, that, is, that, is, that is definitely a, a, a great personal uh, hit. I've launched a YouTube channel. I've launched my video logs. There's a lot happening. So I've been super busy in, uh, in this pandemic. And a surprise element uh, is uh, we never thought as a family we could live together under the same roof without moving out uh, and uh, sort of uh, not fight. Uh, I think the, uh, my mother realized this very early on. And the day she said lockdown started, she started meditating because she's like, I'm not used to all of you staying home into my territory. So I better start meditating. <laughs> the positive is we've all survived. Uh, so that's, that's my... Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that and congratulations on the fitness as well. I think that's always a pressing priority. From fitness, I'd love to transition to Jitender now because I know fitness means a lot to him as well. Uh, Jitender, uh, the same three aspects from you. So, hi everyone. Uh, certainly very glad to be here. Uh, so, for, for me, uh, I would say the personal and professional kind of uh, is, is very, very similar because uh, I think it's an integral part of me, you know, whether it's the professional side of work or the personal side of life. I think what I have learned and seen and, you know, for what's good has come out is the appreciation of life. And that's why, you know, I wouldn't want to kind of, you know, differentiate this. I believe uh, professionally what I've also seen, you know, in the last four months, not only in my organization, but across organizations is how people have started appreciating life. And for, for uh, uh, more understanding, you know, it's, it's more around, you know, what you do in offices, right? The kind of social interactions you have, the kind of relationships that you build and the kind of complexities you manage and the hardships, right? Now we know that, you know, the hardships that we manage, you know, for, uh, on the other side of the table, you know, are certainly very, very different. So I think there's a lot more appreciation of life that I see. And that's what my personal learning as well. On a personal front, I mean, uh, there's, there's nothing, you know, which, which differentiates that, that as well. Uh, I could never, uh, you know, I would say, do a lot of things, uh, you know, even while uh, you know, I, I do a lot of things, you know, on weekends and, you know, post work as well. Uh, but, but I just realized that, you know, there are simple things in life uh, and occasions like this, I wouldn't say okay, I mean, calamities like this actually uh, help us understand uh, we are not missing quite a lot of things, even though, you know, we are having a lot of things, but I think we certainly at times, you know, don't appreciate and take things for granted. 
So I think both from a professional culture and also personal perspective, I would pick this one, which is appreciation uh, for life uh, in terms of surprise. So this is something, you know, where, you know, I really have to kind of think hard because uh, I am, you know, in general, you know, not having like too many surprises uh, uh, you know, as an experience. But I think uh, I never thought that, you know, I could live alone uh, for about four months not get bored, uh, not have, uh, you know, a lot of complexities at hand. So, so I think in the last four months, you know, uh, uh, you know I have graduated beautifully, uh, you know, in this new environment. Uh, and, you know, I'm staying in a three BHK all alone, right? So uh, in Bangalore, wherein my family is in Delhi, uh, I could never think that I, I, I could do that because I've never done that in my life. This is the longest period, you know, where you know, I have stayed alone except my travel trips and other vacations, et cetera. So, so I've not gotten bored and you know, I do not have any complaints in terms of, okay, you know, I don't have mates, you know, I have to kind of cook. I never cooked in my entire life. And uh, this is the time where parents, my parents are super proud of me because at least finally, after 35 years, <laughs> you know, I could learn how to make something. So, so I think that's the pleasant, the, the most pleasant surprise, you know, I have for myself wherein, uh, you know, I, I could be all alone, doing a lot of things, doing a lot of reflection, connecting back, back with people, understanding relationships, and, and realize that, okay, wow, you know, this is something that I should have done much earlier. So yeah, that's, that's my take. Uh, uh, I think that's a great share, Jitendra. Thank you so much for, you know, being so honest and transparent about your own experience as well. I really appreciate that. Uh, Khalid, over to you. I'll try my best just to add something to whatever uh, all of us have already added. But thank you so much for having me. I think it's great to know about uh, all of us. I think uh, when I heard this question, I was just thinking to myself, what is new? And then I realized everything is new. So then I had to struggle. What is one thing that has really stood out for me? So flexing the you know household chores muscles to uh, flexing your emotional muscles to deal with people to flexing your other muscles, which are rather not used in terms of change, the drastic changes that we have seen. So I think uh, I learned a lot of skills, obviously all of us have. Uh, in, the, in the professional front, I think uh, the experience of managing such a kind of situation and still running with the operations and at the same time thinking about what's gonna happen in the future and preparing yourself for it, I think it's a great experience for all of us, uh, not just, just, just for me and I've seen some of us really standing out in terms of this entire chaos. Uh, and, and that has also highlighted the kind of potential we want to look at in terms of hiring people, uh, because that relates back to what kind of people you want to have. Um, that's from a professional aspect. So I've also seen uh, in a professional front, I'm going to just take a couple of other things is, uh, I think the, the culture of working remotely and updating on what Vinay said, the trust aspect or the aspect of moving from number of hours to the outcome has started happening. Instead of tracking what's going in, we are focusing on what's coming out. And then the other place, with, the other piece which has also changed is, is from a place perspective, we have focused on pace now. So we are not bothered where you are. Uh, and I've worked with IBM for a decade and, and I was fortunate to work in remote uh, you know, operations for almost six, seven years. I work from home. Uh, that's the culture that existed. But I think that culture is now prevalent, which is going to help us. Um, in terms of surprise, I, I've got a list of surprises, for example, you know, I have learned how to save money, I have learned how to, uh, you know, you know, look at a, a situation, same situation with a different mindset altogether. Uh, but, it, but the larger one that I see is, is, the, is, a, is a change, um, you know, um, acceptance which, has, which people have got, because they've understood that it's easier to change yourself and your environment and adapt to things. I think that's going to help us, you know, bounce off faster from this. Great. I think, thank you so much for sharing that. And I think with that, we were good, good to actually go into, uh, you know, the, the first aspect of what we wanted to discuss today. Uh, one very prevalent aspect that's come across in about 50, 60 questions that have come in, um, has been the relationship with the hiring manager. Uh, how, how, how does the relationship with the hiring manager work now? And, you know, how does that happen? Uh, and before we, uh, you know, step into the, the question with you guys, and I'll share a question as well. We'd just like to quickly take a poll as well, because I think at this point, uh, I'd love to understand from the close to, I think, 180 plus folks that have already tuned in. Uh, 
I mean, how how has it how has it been for you? How comfortable are your hiring managers with the virtual hiring process? And 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 I think the poll is about to come up very very shortly. There will be five options there as well. Uh, yes, as you can see, I think the the polls there. Uh, so, how comfortable are your hiring managers with the virtual hiring process? Extremely uncomfortable, moderately uncomfortable, no impact. Uh, moderately comfortable and extremely comfortable. So we've covered all options. Uh, I I really do hope that the answer that we're about to get here, uh, you know, helps us get into the next question as well. Uh, and I think we we'll, we'll just take about five ten five to ten more seconds for everyone to vote. Uh, I I think the hiring manager discussion. Why can't we vote? Yes. Why can't we vote? Because I will ask for your opinions on <laughs> on the webinar itself. <laughs> and and of course i think this is something that i i really do want to hear these guys out first because i think we've been talking for a while let's hear them out as well yes i think so uh, the result will be coming up shortly as well all right so they're moderately comfortable but we've got about 55 15 3% 8 and 19% great so i think that that does hold you know a certain amount of positivity within uh, but the first question and i want to ask uh, you know both Binay and Jitender about the same. The question comes from Rachna from Samsung, as well as Lata from Motherson. Both of them ask, a, you know, asked a similar question. Mm -hmm. How do you establish trust, you know, with hiring managers when they aren't the most comfortable with the remote hiring process? How do we, how do we ensure that we've not only gained their trust but we've started to make them comfortable about it? Uh, I think Binay, if you could go first. Sure. Uh, I think. Whenever a hiring manager expresses a discomfort about, uh, you know, not trusting the candidate, I think all HR folks have to ask this question to the hiring managers. How will the candidate trust in the company that the candidate has not even come seen or had any possible exposure to in terms of uh, how the workplace is going to be, what's going to happen. Uh, remote interviews are as scary for candidates as it may be for hiring managers. So the minute the hiring manager realizes that it's that he or she is not the only one who has trust issues, but possibly candidates may not trust as well because uh, you know, they, they, they may have this look and feel issue. Uh, there'll be a lot more appreciation of uh, hiring remotely uh, is, is my quick antidote to this question that hiring managers keep asking. Yes. Uh, Jitendra, what's your take on that? Uh, so I think, uh, I feel there's no one uh, right answer to this or one perspective because, uh, you know, for all the 182 people, so I think it's dependent on a lot of things. So each one of us actually asks this question, you know, to themselves or to their organizations or hiring managers saying that why is there lack of trust? Right. And the answer to that, that, you know, may be very, very different. So I may have a very different answer to what Vinay may come out with, right? So the first start to this is to understand, you know, why is there a lack of trust? Is it because hiring managers, you know, are fearful of change? I mean, there's a lot of bias which is existing. And a lot many times, you know, we understand that there's a lot of bias. And I'll tell you, you know, a very interesting story. When I used to look after, uh, you know, hiring from my own team about five, five years back, uh, someone actually told me that, you know, for you, you are too strict in hiring, right? Why are you kind of moving from one particular way of hiring to other hiring? I realized that, you know, I was trying to hire a clone of myself. So I was biased. So I think all of us, you know, have our own biases as well, right? So I think this is the start of it. You have to first understand why is there no trust? Is it because of resistance? Is it because of, you know, discomfort with technology? Is it because, you know, I don't really understand you know, the HR processes or on the capability of, you know, the talent partner or the recruiter. Once we have been able to understand, you know, where are the trust issues, we essentially have to look at it, you know, like any other change situation. It's not primarily because of COVID that, you know, we have to solve something different. Uh, this situation may arise when you're trying to, let's say, you know, bring in a new ATS as well. The same situation, you know, arises, you know, for when you uh, are wanting to kind of, you know, hire a different uh, you know, geography person, right? So, so I think the case of change is pretty simple. You have to really understand, you know, what is a case of change. Talk to your people involved. And the best thing that, you know, you should do is always be very, very honest. And I think this is one situation wherein I believe that honesty is the best policy. And considering the COVID situation, you have to be like totally very clear, you know, for your high manager saying that, you know, this is the landscape. 
this is the talent we can't operate you know in a physical environment this is the problem statement you let us know you know what we are going to be doing and interestingly everyone understand that you know it's a very difficult and a different situation because hiring managers you know have a lot of business road maps in plan right they have to ensure that talent you know comes on board what are you going to be doing so you know it's a blessing in disguise wherein you know i agree you know for, with vinay wherein he said that change management is slightly easier right so then it becomes it becomes fairly easy for you to translate uh, you know your solutions to you know for some of these interesting examples and i think uh, you know be very honest uh, you know share uh, the use case very well uh, and different people you know will have different uh, you know i would say trust issues so tackle it accordingly great i think i think so uh, in in a, in a, uh, according to what you guys were saying i think we already got a few questions coming in of very similar nature where you know they're saying uh, sandhya you know asked i'm working in an edtech company we are on fire nowadays so the problem which i'm facing is that initially i will conduct telephonic round skype round but before finalizing you have to meet the person and yeah. people are not comfortable due to the current situation so again so i think i think the answer to that question does lie in what we've been discussing uh, i think the acceptance has to come through as khalid was also saying earlier i think the acceptance of change is necessary that this has to be a new process uh, and and i'm and i'm going to transition into the next question and i'm going to pose that to both khalid and mega as well uh, simply because you know as soon as the remote hiring aspect comes in the next one is the the personal touch in the onboarding experience i mean how do you how do you ensure that that is something that is enjoyable and you know does inculcate that sense of belongingness uh, this question comes to us from uh, from iksha from grofers uh, and thank you iksha for the question and uh, firstly i think khalid why don't you give it a crack sure i think it's a, it's an important question i think it's a burning question everywhere how do we how do we hire people remotely and then even if you have hired somebody remotely how do you essentially get them into the fold of your organization and Uh, it's it's not rocket science that we have to do it virtually but the but the fact remains how do you make that entire journey and experience so i think the the aspect and the and the vision and should remain the same that it's all about the experience at the end of the day we just need to factor in that there is no physical uh, co location where you can actually meet with the person and 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 you know as as uh, uh, you know human beings we like to see each other and i think that's where the earlier question that we were talking about the trust also factors in because since you can't meet somebody face to face you have that dust trust deficit in uh, onboarding is the same thing i think what couple of things that we need to focus on one is uh, we need to focus on the entire experience part uh, and now when we talk about experience i don't have to take a lesson on design learning but if you just deploy that entire piece here uh, methodology you'll understand that you're designing a, a, a virtual onboarding for the for the candidate who has known nothing about your organization what when i was was talking about how the candidate trusts you and you need to ensure that what you used to do in first two days because that were the first two days of first one week of onboarding don't take that first two days as your onboarding because now you have the flexibility to run this onboarding probably to a span of let's say 15 days and put it in structures which are consumable because if you were to put me in front of this wonderful panel run this webinar for another 45 minutes after one hour i'm telling you there will be only five people left because after some time your consumability also goes down so we need to make it very interesting we need to spread it out uh we need to get uh, people learn the technology as soon as possible at the same time if you need to start to get them into slacks and yammers and connections and those kind of co creation and collaboration tools quickly so that they start to engage uh provide them with the synchronous and asynchronous learning which which means that they can go and complete some learnings on their own yeah. the other piece is about the culture i think that's where a lot of onboarding programs start to fail especially in a virtual environment environment because they're not able to help the newcomer assimilate into the culture i think a lot of focus has to go there it could be about interactions it could be about activities it could be about smaller 5 10 people coming together and and understanding what it's all about and how does it relate back to their their service line and the kind of work they do so if i am a programmer and you have a vision 2030 of 50 billion how does it impact me at the end of the day because i'm just going to do the same job so how does it relate back to them and and and, and the last bit is also ensure that your uh, and again hiring managers now because your people managers who are going to be managing these teams how how 
forthcoming they are in terms of welcoming these people how forthcoming they are in terms of in the absence of looking at each other face to face how do you ensure that video compensate to it and and your conversations deep rooted understanding where they come from if they have any challenges creating this environment around them is going to be a huge uh, you know uh, uh, pivotal piece in terms of managing virtual onboarding yeah i think mega uh, your take on the same yeah so i think uh, khalid said it pretty well and you know uh, he spoke about the overall strategy but just to you know uh, give like a quick tips and techniques to people around this so you know first fact that i want to share and you know this was very recently in one of the uh, you know quite well known hr magazine without taking names but uh, you know uh, the recent study shows that you know uh, there is a 79% drop in hiring today which is in last quarter this particular quarter we see a 79% drop in the demand uh, and obviously the forecast is that is going to continue for at least one more quarter so that's the forecast that i'm talking about today which means your onboarding is pretty much you know same drop percentage will happen because obviously if hiring is not happening then onboarding is also pretty much not happening now which means that you have smaller set of people that you're fo- focusing on which means there is small pool of crowd so there is no more you know a virtual onboarding program for say 100 people like and i'll give you an example we you know we were literally doing every week induction now we have gone to monthly inductions and obviously everything is virtual today but because the number of joiners are less you automatically went to a zone where people are now waiting to come to a standard process of onboarding maybe once in a month which were earlier like on a weekly or you know two weeks depending on the organization that you are now which means you know uh, you know you're much more expected for people to create an experience environment which typically means how do you connect and build that connection with the people who are joining as well because as much as fear there is with the employer there is a lot more fear with the you know person who's joining as well oh my god i'm joining virtually and i'll give you a live example i was having uh, you know this week itself uh, uh, with a very senior person that recently uh, we hired in one of the other locations in the south part of india and the person was saying oh my god you know i saw you uh, last to last week but you know it feels so different while i'm onboarding while things are so said but you know it just feels so different if i would have been in office uh, you know this would have been a different experience and i said why would you say that you know i sit here you sit in the other part of this country you know it respective of that you know we would still have a virtual call irrespective of that fact we would have still had a virtual interview irrespective of anything you know we will still be interacting over chats and teams or calls so you know sometimes it's just in the mind of us as you know culturally or uh, so much we call as a physical distance so i think first step is to just call out what's really making people uncomfortable to say you know this is normal because you know even not ev- every organization is based in one location we are multi geography or multi city organization so we anyways do inter- over a live medium it's just that the pace and the amount and the quantum has just gone to a you know significantly high way uh, which means what we need to start doing is absolutely before hiring and you know three key tips and techniques do a keep warm program so that you know you are connecting with people much before what you're supposed to which means in form of emailers where you you may share you know how is your culture of the organization what are some of the testimonies that people talk about this organization you know some quick trips and nice policies to share about you know whether it's welfare policies whether it's benefits policies or you know uh, how do you look forward to people who join you know some of those stick and things that you know builds that trust back with the uh, associate to say oh i'm joining best of the organization you know why can't you have a team call before the person joins to just you know engage with them that he had this is the team environment that i'm joining have an assimilation plan quite ready ensure that every manager you know whether it's a techie whether it's a you know a support function person who's joining have an exhaust rate like a month long assimilation program which includes your cultural assimilation which includes the values of the organization which includes you know what is who's the buddy who's going to help you know uh, understand the culture which means you know connecting with you know senior leadership connecting with the peer groups connecting with who are the you know in this role who are some people that i must know of and you know the individual start connecting with them so you know these are some things that absolutely helps beyond just the traditional onboarding of five day three day that you will end up running i think that absolutely helps in a virtual environment for an individual to get set for next 30 to 60 days great i think i think so yeah. i just have one one um, and this is an experiment we did at tone tag and i think everybody would uh, really uh, love to experiment with this uh guys everybody who who are sort of saying how do we onboard how do we integrate how do we assimilate 
you guys go watch a movie you relate so closely to the character of the movie you are so emotionally connected to the character storytelling is underrated and often forgotten as a skill to connect people we use storyboarding instead of onboarding where every department shared story of the context of why the department exists or why that team exists the minute i'm telling a story to somebody the connect the emotional connect that we are talking about is automatically you know made and once the emotional connect is made he or she will read any document that you share over emails will go through it with full intensity so try storytelling uh, about your department instead of just you know um, your all your regular programs that you do it will have a great impact i think i think one thing that i uh, so i've interacted with a lot of the panelists before and one thing i love about at least you know everyone who i've interacted with previously is they're all great storytellers uh i've i've had i've had a great experience with at least two or three of these folks at events and i knew this was about to come and as a marketing professional i love the fact that storytelling is now a part of the employer branding conversation as well and and i think the questions that are coming in you know about the emotional touch belongingness and you know how do we work on i think storytelling is absolute key to that uh definitely i think thank you for sharing that and i love that we got so many best practices in as well right so thank you so much uh, to all three of you uh i'm going to actually quickly uh, you know have have jitender answer one question but i'm going to ask you to make it really, really crisp uh, you know because we want to jump to the ne- next section as well uh, jitender as the chro you ha- i mean one very key aspect will always be around the background uh, you know evaluation and everything because eventually these decisions how how are these processes done uh, and you know i'm i'm a, a lot of those calls will be yours they will be your decisions uh, so in in these times you know where we're all focused on virtual hiring uh, and you know hiring the right candidate is key uh, how do you ensure that the focus on the background evaluation does not drop so prashant i don't i don't i don't see there has to be any difference you know in a remote scenario or a non non remote scenario right because you know we are essentially look at looking at quality of talent and we have to understand you know why why do we do background verification while well, i will come to you know for my take on background verification as a process but i think it doesn't have to depend on you know whether your offices are open or your offices are not open right it is primarily dependent on you know how sure you know are you about you know hiring a particular talent now let me come to you know my own take on background verification i believe that background verification is as a process you know is 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 largely looked at you know as, as as a very very mechanical or a tick mark activity in a lot of organizations both from a vendor perspective as well and also from an organization perspective and if you ask recruiters then they'll they'll really hate background verification process right because they have really spent huge amount of time making that offer and then there is a bjv uh, you know which has gone to a third party it comes back you know with a red saying that hey sorry <laughs> you know you can't proceed but fundamentally i believe that you know for as organizations we also needs to kind of look at background verification as a strategic process not just as a mechanical process uh you know it it's it's okay to you know have a volume of bjvs rolling out but i think how you look at you know background verification uh you know as as a strategic tool needs to change i'll give a very interesting example uh, we do not uh, empanel any third party for doing a background verification process right primarily uh, you know for the reason that you know it's largely mechanical and you know there's a lot of time which is involved and ultimately what you get is very different than what you expect so uh, background verification is largely you know considered as a ref check as well and i'm sure you know all of us would agree that you know around 60 to 80% of the verifications happen on references right so but i personally feel that you know that's not the right approach and i'll also tell you you know the reason why i say that there is very very less objectivity and a huge amount of subjectivity which is involved in reference checks or the background verifications that you do internally so if you are hiring let's say you know a director of engineering you see that okay these are the two companies you know this person has worked and you just immediately rang up some uh, you know rang up someone and say that hey how is this guy i say ha acha hai this guy is good ha uh, chalo theek hai ek positive reference aa gaya right so so what i have seen is yes it is good to have reference checks but i think as hr professionals it is our utmost responsibility because i have seen personally 
and I have made those wrong wrong calls as well, wherein I have not been very very objective in understanding you know about the reference. Right? Yes, it's good that you have a credibility attached to the person who is giving you reference, but you also have to be very objective in terms of what do I want to understand from this conversation. And one of the very interesting example which I had was you know I took a call saying that hey I'm not going to hire this person based on the reference. And that guy later on, you know, was being hired by me through under circumstances and was a great guy. It's just that, you know, at a particular point in time with a particular manager in a particular organization, he had a very different experience altogether. So, so my take is that, you know, whatever we do, whether we do a blind ref check or we do references provided by the organization, uh, provided by the candidate, or let's say, you know, through a third party, we have to be like super, super objective in being very clear on what we want to understand because experiences are different. Let's not make experiences as perceptions to hire. Let's only hire based on what experience do I need and then look at the background verification process. So this is my uh, long take on the crisp question that you asked. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dinder. And thank you for sharing a personal you know, aspect to it as well. Uh, you know, before I move on to the next section, I think, one question that I want to ask all the attendees, and it's a question that's actually, you know, relatable to what's, what's being asked by a lot of people as well. Uh, and, and we'll have a poll going up on, on that, you know, very, very shortly as well. Uh, it's basically around, you know, is your organization fully prepared? And when I say fully, I mean, if, if, you, if this is the normal, are you ready to start this process from tomorrow? Is your organization fully prepared to make remote hiring the new normal? Simple yes or no answer which is why we won't give it more than 10 seconds uh, and would love for everyone to sort of quickly get their take in. And it's anonymous, so don't worry, we're not going to sort of go ahead and start <laughs> asking your organizations. I realize panels also can vote this time. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I think. So Feedback by <laughs> taken. <laughs> Absolutely. Prashad, you know, while people are voting, I think, you know, we just love to exaggerate situations. Is yeah. organization fully prepared? Is organization fully ready? I mean, this is a temporary situation. It will change and we'll, we'll come back in moderation to use the best practices. I mean, we are not changing that much. I mean, let's relax. So, Vinay, 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 similar to, you know, some of these media stories going around, right? Wherein... <laughs> Sorry, I'm right. just taking a little bit. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I guess that is that is what we're you know trying to get to, and that's what's come across in the poll as well. Sixty percent, close to sixty percent, feel that you know it's it's not they're not necessarily ready, and you know we, we they do need some kind of a playbook or a blueprint. Uh, and you know that's also a question that's come across from uh, you know Benoy from Doctor Reddy's, and it's a question that's been asked you know by by our live attendees as well constantly. Uh, if I was to ask you, uh, Vinay, and I'm going, to ask, I'm going to ask Vinay first, Vinay, what would be the ideal remote hiring process for you if you were to implement it starting tomorrow? So I think uh, uh, remote hiring process... And, and, my, and, and my request is so that we can take as many questions as possible. Let's keep it crisp. 30 seconds or yeah. 30 seconds. Perfect. In fact, I answer to somebody as well. I think there'll be a lot more focus on... Uh, psychometric assessment tools, which uh, were just used, I don't know for what, in most organizations. So I think there'll be a lot of lot of uh, focus on that. I I was talking to a handwriting analyst, somebody who analyzes handwriting to understand a certain traits of an individual. Now this is a very new thing, but you know a lot of these things already existed. So that there'll be a change and an appreciation in that sense. Uh, there will be virtual interviews. And uh, there will be a lot of assignments where people would be invested in the process uh, just to see how uh, clear they are. So I just see these three things, you know, uh, uh, psychometric assessments, assignments and interviews in the process. Great. Uh, Khalid, your quick take as well on this? I think it would essentially mean, if, you know, you need to look at the entire life cycle of a recruitment. Uh, so while when I spoke of assessment, I think it needs to transform how even the business assessments are done right now. So while it, it was an interaction earlier, now it could be more of you know case studies and it could be proctor-based case studies you can look at. Uh, then you're going to also look at some of the other assessments feeding into it, your technical assessments coming into it. And the last bit going to be is, uh, you know, the, the uh, learnability, which is very difficult to capture, but at the same time putting people into situations which are difficult because what we want are the people who are nimble and agile. 
and at the same time if we find people who are fixated on their industry because they have worked in that industry forever and now that doesn't exist and the resistance to change i think those kind of people will be less preferred because uh, at this point in time your skill sets are changing your industries are amalgamating changing the world is changing around us i know vinay uh, uh, you know has has joked about it that it will change but i think a new normal has already emerged from that perspective so it's not going to be something drastically different we're going to wear suits and go to office uh, space suits but at the same time we want to also have this new world impacting all the other work that we do last bit i think uh, the question about being future ready in terms of uh, you know remote hiring look at the cost impact at the end of the day so any smart business would want to operate in that model to maximize the cost but obviously we're going to have some positions which will not go to remote at all great i think so once again i think what we sort of got from that was again that a lot of these aspects from cost you know to the personal touch all of these things are involved in this process so while we may not have a ready made playbook for all the attendees to you know take and go ahead and implement but do try to customize this as per you know whatever you think is suitable for you uh, and you know on that note i'd like to quickly ask one question and it's it's a simple it's a simple one line answer that i would request all four to give at this point right uh, the the question is actually about uh, the the flip side uh, do you do you see the fill rates uh, or lower dropouts uh, you know actually coming into play because what we uh, so uh, An anita from abbot asked this questions have you seen the impact on the hiring cycle lower dropouts or better fill rates because of virtual hiring like what's your take on that you know from whatever you've experienced in the last few months megha do you want to go first sure so prashant uh, see these you know it's it's very difficult to answer this and i'll tell you why see you know if there is and i'm going back to the same stats if there are 79% lesser demand so then what necessarily happens is you know if i am a person who has limited opportunities so automatically it will impact the fact that if i'm getting two options i would want to explore those two options because now no more there are 10 options available in the market so that definitely has an impact overall on the fill rate so i think there is still a lot stats around saying does it have an impact because we have gone in the virtual mode or is it because of the demand and the supply piece of it because i think both of the equations does play a lot of role like i'll give you a simple example today there were a lot of resignations that happened today those resignations have been withdrawn by people by the way and there are multiple of those that we have seen in last 3 months i'm i'm not sure about others but at least we have seen in our organization and that's primarily because you know people are scared to right now move on the jobs or even to the fact that you know the new organization have withdrawn the offers too so that also so shows up the picture that you know people have started to be more committed and loyal to the current organization and similarly happens with obviously the new place that you're getting in offer so definitely we've seen that you know the offer dropout percentage have gone uh, pretty low but i feel that these are a lot more is also percolated around the demand and the supply piece all right great uh, does anyone have something different or do you all agree i just just wanted to add if i had an oracle ball i would have crystal ball i would have been an oracle and tell what's going to happen but my assessment uh, is that uh, organization will be very choosy in hiring now because they need to essentially look at what they need and at the same time survive the current scenario some are bootstrapped some are developing some are already developed but everybody is looking at their pockets i think what's going to happen is these numbers may fluctuate based on few things because right now even if there are jobs uh people are not ready to move because of the situation and because of the lockdown so you're not going to have a larger pool to tap into anyhow at the same time you're going to see a lot of resistance in terms of people big making themselves uncomfortable going into a scenario where they don't know what's going to happen to the industry or the organization eventually so you're going to have brands attracting more people uh, compared to less unknown brands that's going to happen your fill rates may or may not impact as much because your number of positions are also lower at this point in time so it may impact from a geographical perspective but otherwise if you have the entire structure made out from your hiring onboarding and deployment can happen remotely i think you will be in a better shape as an organization right so i think we will be in a better position to answer this question once we you know enter some phase of normalcy and then we 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 will actually realize how the job market is actually right there uh, so to uh, just to add to this prashant i mean uh, i personally feel uh, that the fill rates are not low or probably you know it's not reducing uh, due to the remote hiring uh, uh context or let's say you know if you are totally gone virtual i don't think you know it's 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 correlated 
uh, but I think people have certainly, you know, become more uh, aware and uh, you know, there's a lot of ambiguity and uncertainty around. So I think the rates are slightly less, you know, they are probably more backouts or let's say, you know, people are going back to their own firms because they are evaluating very, they, they are being very prudent about evaluating risks. And that's what you know, all of us anyways, you know, for, uh, have to do, you know, whether it's a candidate or it's an organization. So, so I don't think it's primarily because of, you know, for moving into a new environment. Uh, I, I don't think that that largely you know, is, is going to be uh, related. Right. So I think, again, so that's another different take that, you know, we see, uh, you know, I, I think it, it will depend on how it plays out in the, you know, in the in future. Uh, one poll that, again, you know, we, we, we'll, we'll just do one last poll. Uh, and this is largely about the biggest challenge that's related to technology. Now, technology is key. I think anyone who hasn't adapted yet is now forced to adapt. And I think uh, the digitalization of HR has been spoken about for years. Now it's absolutely there. So uh, what is the biggest challenge related to technology when it comes to remote hiring? Uh, we've been pretty transparent with our options. It could be a lack of budget, lack of training, uh, and or lack of stakeholder resistance. And uh, again, I think the this question is very important from the point of view, understanding where the attendees are struggling, where the recruiters are struggling. Uh, so I think another five seconds, we'll take this down and see where we are on it. And after this, I have one question. Uh, I want to say this, Prashant. I think when you put a lack of budget, I think it's going to get more answers there. <laughs> I think, let's see. So, Khalid, then that is the unfortunate reality. I think it's the third point uh, where people paint as lack of budget more often. <laughs> <laughs> Not coming. All right. So it's the third point is so, so see it's pretty it's even. So everyone is sort of struggling with their own piece, uh, and you know. I you why I think call it to that point. I think everybody realizes that boss money is not a problem. People will say budgets, but they know that they're spending money yeah. on something else, but they're not spending here. Yeah. So I think it's more of resistance that people can see through, right? I mean, we as leaders have a tough job when we talk of budgets, but the reality is. It is. Yeah. yeah. And let me give you one uh, because I heard Oracle from Khalid and it reminds me that I saw very recently that roadies have started doing online auditions. Now imagine in a normal situation, people will stand in a queue since midnight. So today they just have a slot and they do it online. So how cool is that, by the way, for people? Mega, you've done me a favor because my next question is about you know, one very, one very similar aspect, not exactly roadies auditions, but, but, but what I mean to say is within the technology piece, uh, you know, walk-ins were a huge norm in the pre-pandemic days. And I'm going to ask only for this because post this, uh, you know, we, we will be looking to sort of bring closure to the proceedings. Uh, but Pine, uh, Shubra from BMC software asked, uh, walk-in were a norm in the pre-pandemic days, especially for junior roles. Now, what role can technology play so that our time to hire is not impacted in a virtual hiring environment? So I think this is something that, you know, I think because I think we work together on hiring events as well, walk-in drives, a lot of these things. So which is why if, if very quickly you could share your take on this. Yeah, I think, uh, I think technology is already available to aid in your hiring efforts. Technology was never a challenge. Challenge was really mindset. What is changing now and what needs to change is the mindset of people to accept the new reality and get moving on with it. Uh, but more importantly, Prashant, and, and, and you know, we have not really spoken about this, but since there's a lot of recruitment community here, uh, and I have this angst with the recruitment fraternity in, in general, that we do not respond enough to candidates. Now, if it were a walk-in event where somebody walks in and attends an interview, he or she will also make an assessment based on the body language, based on what is happening, whether he or she is selected or not selected. In these times, to build your credibility, to build your brand, to reduce your offer dropouts, to reduce uh, a lot of these things that happen, I think we have to walk the extra mile as an HR community to be over-responsive. Uh, if we post a job, we have to stop or pause the job as soon as we get 100 responses, get done with them, then restart the search. We see so many jobs that are posted, thousands of people are applying, they just don't know what is there. We also write responses saying, you'll only get a call if you're shortlisted. So I have to keep waiting. Okay, if I get a call, I'm shortlisted. Let's be fair, right? I think uh, more than technology or more than uh, 
uh, more than tools available which are already there i think it's our mindset to be over responsive uh, will help us attract talent in in these tough times that's that's my uh, Yeah. yeah i just want to add one thing uh, you know while i uh, agree to the fact that the technology is available but i also feel that there would be new set of technology that would emerge and you know we would see a live example and i'm forgetting which brand it is what is whether it was volvo or volkswagen who used ai for hiring wherein you know you can sit in a car and you know a uh, computer will ask you questions and everything will be recorded and basis that you will start to shortlist which means today you know we still do an interview uh, and i'll give you an example today we do a panel interview through you know using zoom but we haven't gone to a recorded format still for an interview process wherein you know people can you know post questions file you can record and you know then you can give it to the panel and shortlist we have never thought about that so technology will come in new shapes and form with obviously the new pandemic whether it's related to ai whether it's related to you know recorded versions whether related to software which somewhere exists which can just screen your resumes we haven't gone through that level i think we still use a tested and tried traditional format of having virtual interviews i think technology was also move much faster with obviously you know people working remotely and work from anywhere kind of an environment again i think great so that again comes from you know something that you've experienced you know within your own something you've seen and you think that also will have an impact on how technology is used within the remote hiring workspace as well uh, now i've now not only have i run very very close to the end the end of time but what i will definitely take uh, you know one very important aspect is you know since we're not able to take all the questions since we're not able to do everything within one hour i think the best way to close you know the the, the eventual uh, purpose of this webinar is to get some best practices in right uh, i'm going to go one by one to each panelist and this time i'm going to go in reverse order we'll start with khalid uh, uh, Two, yes, <laughs> yes, Khalid. Uh, when it matters, we've come to you first, and now Mega has to go last. All right, uh, Khalid, uh, coming to you first. I, I think the attendees, me, everyone listening, would love to hear two best practices. Uh, you know that you've seen through any colleagues implemented at your own organization or something that you know you would recommend within these remote hiring or technology hiring times. Right. So I, I have a laundry list of wish lists that I want. We will do. But I'm just gonna get talk about two things that we have already done uh, in EY. One is we are looking at, uh, you know, given this new environment, we are talking about managers not uh, able to do the interviews. Candidates struggle too. So we are working on a on a small little document which talks about how a candidate can leverage everything around them to be a better uh, to be an employee for EY. Uh, it's like an interview prep guide which talks about how do you set up your uh, video, how do you prep for the interview. what should you know because it's not a physical environment they can't talk to anybody so an interview preparation module sort of correct interview preparation the second piece we've done is also looking at uh, you know we've hired people from campus uh, we want to ensure that they are also engaged because uh, unlike a lateral they don't know a lot of people in industry so we have arranged some kind of uh, you know virtual meet and greet for them wherein we can leverage that time to have them interact with some of our leaders within, within the organization i think that's also helping us build that vacuum where nothing is happening Great. Perfect. I think that's great, precise points. Thank you so much, Khalid, for that. Uh, Jitendra, I'm going to come to you next. Yeah. So one uh, one best practice, or, or rather two best practices, as you asked, is one is uh, don't just kind of you know for uh, implement or or uh, accept any advice that you hear, you know, whether here or anywhere else. Because I think these are times where you know people keep talking about you know a lot of new things which sound cool or seem cool, right? So I think always look for the context, right? So for me, if I have to move to a remote hiring solution, let's say, right? Don't just go by, okay, you know, this sounds cool, and you know, let's go with this particular technology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Look at, you know, whether it is solving a particular context or you or no. If you are a manufacturing company, and if you have to kind of move to the new scenario, what are some of the problem statements that you have, and what will solve them? Rather than you know, just you know, for, look at a magazine, you know, get something you know which is flashy and say that. you know okay we want to implement this doesn't work like this so so i think that's number one second uh, you know best practice and which always you know is is uh, you know is is fundamental to you know hr and recruitment is uh, have a more data oriented approach because these are the times where you will get a lot pressurized as well hiring managers will come and say that hey you know the pipeline is pretty bleak and then you know that you know why pipeline is bleak because you know candidates are not available in the market and the talent market is playing differently right 
so there is going to be a lot of questioning this there's going to be a lot of you know pushback as well so always try and ensure that you know if you have a data orientation approach with you third thing something that we did as an organization is we completely reengineered the entire talent acquisition process in the last 4 months right from how candidates have to look at this you know how hiring managers needs to start kind of uh, you know changing uh, you know in in terms of the remote situation so we looked at the entire virtual scenario and reengineered the entire talent acquisition process in the last 4 months so these are the three things that we did at moinbridge great so i think re- reinvention and innovation has also played an important role for you and uh, i think kudos on that as well uh, vinay i'm going to come to you next sure uh i think uh, one point that uh, khalid mentioned and and in fact i've seen khalid's team do this in the past as well is really prepare the candidates for the conversation and uh, uh it is amazing when you prepare your candidate for the conversation the connect you build uh, not just technical preparation that is how do you get on the video how do you do all of that but i think a preparation of who they are meeting and what those people would expect will give a confidence boost so one definitely everybody as recruitment leads here on this call should get their teams to get their candidates to prepare second i think i would not settle for anything less than a 100% response rate to any application that comes into me uh, which which means that we have to target a 100% response rate i think candidates deserve that however busy how many ever thousands of applications we get either we you know then moderate our application flow but we have to respond that's a angst that's building up and as a best practice if you are able to do that there'll be a lot more credibility and also impact on your offer declines by the way great uh, mega if you could quickly uh, share two best practices for, for, you know from your side as well uh i think yeah so i think uh, one of the best practices that i want to call out okay sorry can you hear me yes okay, yes perfect. so i think one of the best, best practice that i want to talk about is you know look at the entire looks like i think we 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 lasted the entire hour but that's when the uh, the technology and internet has sort of you know uh, left us unfortunately uh what we'll do is we will we'll try to get meher to post these two best practices across social media platforms as well and we'll try to get those to you uh but unfortunately on that note uh, we will have to wrap this up for today uh it's sharp at 5 so by hook or by crook we have managed to manage everything in within one hour i'm extremely grateful uh mega yeah hi mega welcome back uh, but i was just in the process of winding everything up so i i think it would be great if you could just drop the two best practices on the chat as well i think everyone would be uh, you know extremely informed for that uh, i think we maintained about uh, the, the 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 first count that came in i think we've got about we uh, 95% of you have st- stayed with us at least i think the 5% must have had some work i'm not going to critically analyze this webinar but i'm going to say they must have had some work which is why they decided to drop off uh, but extremely grateful to all the panelists <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah so uh, to all the attendees thank you for spending your 4 to 5 with us uh, on a thursday we'll be back again in a, in another fortnight uh, to all the panelists wonderful wonderful insights uh, we're very very grateful to all of you for you know being here sharing your insights Uh, to all the attendees while you drop off please do fill the feedback form because if you don't give us feedback we can't come back better thank you for saying it's a wonderful webinar love the chat comments that are coming in appreciate it uh, and once again i think from all of us i think very very hopeful that you're all safe taking all the precaution and all the best to everyone from me and the panelists thank you guys